nutrition. I work out whenever I can. But with my moderate to severe eczema, it can be tough. Now I'm staying ahead of it. Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, so you can have clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about Dupixent. Tomorrow on E.T., only we're with Tom Brady, the actor. Really? His life after football, why he's channeling Oprah and Tom Cruise. Sometimes we went off script a little bit. Uh, be sure to check that one out. Now, we've got one more thing to show you. Happening now. After more than a week of witnesses, the state has rested in the retrial murder case of Mark Howerton. Coming up, we'll explain why the defense was asking for a mistrial. A little bit of activity on the radar screen we'll take a look at, along with more storm chances in the future and a bit of a temperature comparison this year to last in just a bit. If you're one of the people who suffers from chronic back pain, yoga might be the key to better health. How the deep breathing and stretching might end your suffering. The News at 5 starts right now. The man accused of murdering a Trinity University student now getting his turn to explain how he didn't do it again. Mark Howerton being retried for the murder of Kaylee Mandati, and we're in the courtroom once again. Before resting its case, the state played the audio of two of Howerton's interviews with investigators, Eric Hernandez, with what he said in those recordings, but also how his attorney began their argument of innocence. As Trinity University student Kaylee Mendati laid lifeless in a hospital, her boyfriend Mark Howerton telling Texas Rangers his version of what happened. Howerton is on trial for Mendati's 2017 murder. On October 30th and 31st, 2017, Howerton in taped interviews tells Ranger Raymond Benoit different versions of what happened between he and Mendati and about their relationship. At one point, even saying, quote, she hated Trinity University and her friends and just wanted to be with me. In the second interview, he also walks back what he previously said and told Ranger Benoit the two actually had rough sex in a parking lot in San Antonio, not a Valero. The state rested after those audio tapes were aired, but immediately after, defense attorney John Hunter requested a mistrial saying that the state didn't prove without a reasonable doubt that Howerton had committed murder or sexual assault. That motion was denied. The defense this afternoon called their first witness, a digital forensic expert who gave his review of cell phone data he collected from Howerton and Mendati's phone, as well as her ex-boyfriend's phone. This case will continue Thursday morning and Depending on how many witnesses the defense has, the state can still put on a rebuttal witness. After that, then there will be closing arguments. The jury could begin deliberations as early as tomorrow or on Friday. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. A man sitting outside of a house becomes the target of a gunman early this morning. That shooter's still on the loose at this hour. It happened just after 3.30 this morning in the 6200 block of West Commerce near Hortensia Street on the west side. Police said the victim was in front of a house when two men opened fire on him, hitting him in the head and the arm. The victim rushed to the hospital in critical condition. So far, no arrests and no word on any description of the suspects. An update on a story we told you about yesterday at 5. The woman who died after being pinned between two vehicles now identified as 42-year-old Karina Huerta. Corina, whose family says she was known as Cody, got caught between these cars yesterday morning near Brooklyn Avenue and Dallas Street, close to North St. Mary's. Police say that she was walking to her car when a distracted driver hit her, pinning her up against another vehicle. The driver tried to help the woman, but the family said she died from her injuries. A rolling gunfire. San Antonio police say a 19-year-old who shot at a driver is now charged in the road rage incident. Ryan Salome being charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Detectives say the incident happened on April 4th. According to an affidavit, the person that was driving the vehicle that Salome was a passenger in cut off another driver. That's how it started. Police say the driver responded by flashing his lights and throwing the bird, then switching lanes. Detectives say the vehicle that had Salome in it followed that driver, pulled up next to him. According to the affidavit, the victim says someone in the vehicle started shooting and he swerved into the vehicle where the shots were coming from, causing both vehicles to stop. 
Salome reportedly fled the scene, but a warrant was issued for his arrest that day. He wasn't arrested, though, until yesterday. He was released on a $75,000 bond. A reminder for San Antonians living in districts one and seven. The polls are now open for early voting in the city's runoff elections. In the district one race, current Councilman Mario Bravo is facing Sook Core, who captured more votes than Bravo during the May 6th election. Newcomers Marina Alderete Gavito and Dan Rossiter are facing each other in the runoff of the District 7 position. Alderete Gavito actually received 43% of the votes to Rossiter's 21% on Election Day. District 7 became open after Anna Sandoval resigned in January. The polls close at 6 tonight. Early voting ends next Tuesday and polls are closed on Sunday. Election Day, by the way, next weekend, June 10th. Across America, the man accused of the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in U.S. history on trial and facing the death penalty. 50-year-old Robert Bowers is accused of killing 11 people inside the Tree of Life synagogue in Pittsburgh five years ago. Today, we got our first look at an image from inside the synagogue. In it, you see police crime tape and a gun magazine on the floor. Prosecutors focusing on Bowers' intent, telling the jury he was motivated by his hatred of Jews. The defense is asking the jury to consider Bauer's mental illnesses, including schizophrenia, brain impairments, and epilepsy. Did he abandon the students? Jury selection started today in the trial of the former sheriff's deputy who worked as a school resource officer during the 2018 Parkland, Florida shooting. 60-year-old Scott Peterson charged with felony child neglect, culpable negligence, and perjury. Prosecutors say Peterson failed to confront the 19-year-old shooter and stayed outside of the school during that shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas that resulted in 14 children and three staff members dying. Prosecutors argue that as a school resource officer, Peterson had a duty to protect students and teachers. Peterson and his attorneys say he had no legal obligation to confront the shooter. According to the Associated Press, 55 finalists out of a pool of 300 people have been chosen to return to court on Monday, where six jurors and four alternates will be selected. An astonishing crash caught on camera in South Georgia. Despite this car going airborne, flipping and being ripped apart, somehow the driver survived. The video you're watching is from a deputy's body camera. Crews were tending to one car accident when suddenly another driver sped onto a ramp attached to a tow truck and that car goes airborne. The driver was injured, but he is alive. A deputy was also hurt by flying debris. This video, a very good reminder about you need to move over, which states like Georgia and Texas require drivers to do move over or slow down when there are emergency vehicles on the road. We are waiting for a crucial vote tonight of the House of Representatives. The deal brokered by President Joe Biden and Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy still needs to pass the House and the Senate, then be signed by the President. As ABC's M. Wynn reports from the Capitol that despite both Biden and McCarthy saying they have the votes, a growing number of conservative Republicans and progressive Democrats saying they're going to vote no. Tonight, the Republican-controlled House is poised to vote on the debt ceiling bill negotiated by President Joe Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy, aimed at averting the nation's first ever government default. We're going to deal with the debt ceiling. We have, we have, I think things are going as planned, God willing. But a growing number of Republican and Democratic members are voicing their opposition. It is a, a fiscal disaster for the American people. Kevin McCarthy needs to put up his votes, and if he needs mine, he can come get it. Still, McCarthy says that with Democratic votes, he's confident the compromise bill will pass. The legislation suspends the debt ceiling cap until 2025, and according to the Congressional Budget Office, will cut around $1.5 trillion from the deficit over the next 10 years. We're going to pass the largest largest cut in American history. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries warning McCarthy to focus on securing a majority of Republican votes, especially with several progressive Democrats unhappy with the bill. That House Republicans need to keep their commitment to produce 150 votes. As Washington stares down a projected June 5th default deadline, both Senate leaders are pushing their members for swift passage of the House bill, as some are demanding amendments, but any delay might trigger a default. When this agreement reaches the Senate, I'll be proud to support it. Either we proceed quickly and send this bipartisan agreement to the president's desk, 
or the federal government will default for the first time ever. Ahead of tonight's vote in the House, Speaker McCarthy announced the creation of a bipartisan commission tasked with reviewing the full budget and finding long-term solutions to further cutting down federal spending. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Check out Trans Guide right now, and we're going to go to 410 at Perimbital and then 281 at Hildebrand. You can actually see the southbound lanes of 281 backing up there. Also, a look at 90 at Couples. Sea breeze kicked up a few showers far south and east of San Antonio in the more typical locations that see that in the early afternoon and even late afternoon. You look at the radar over the past hour and these are really falling apart and fizzling out, raining themselves out. But you can see the breeze that's coming in, moving through Gonzales, Stockdale as well. That's going to make it here, but we don't anticipate it to kickstart any showers around San Antonio. Near Hallettsville, you've got a few showers hanging on and just around Quero, one little shower barely hanging on. Temperature wise, right near 90 degrees, 90 even. Michael's, Michael's backyard in Floresville, along with shirts, 89 in Eagle Pass. Right now we're 83 in Bernie and around Lavernia, we're at 91 degrees. As we go through the evening, pretty quiet. The sky's going to clear out. What we have out there for rain is really coming to an end quickly. Temperatures near normal for this time of year. Speaking of temperatures, we're going to have a comparison of up to this time last year compared to this year, the big difference, along with our return of storm chances in a bit. Thank you so much, Adam. Coming up, doing yoga could do more than just clear your mind and get rid of that stress. How yoga is offering pain sufferers relief in their bodies. Next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. A unique legislative session in Austin, and it is not done yet. From impeachment to schools and property taxes, we talk with lawmakers from each party to recap what's happened and what comes next. Domestic violence victims who don't speak English often stay in dangerous relationships, afraid they can't get help. But a local survivor wants them to know that is not true. Today at 6, translation services that are available right here in San Antonio. All that and more today in less than an hour on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. 150 days in office and today we were there for the new Bear County judge, Peter Sakai, giving his first state of the county address. Now, while he says he's still collecting the data from his top to bottom study of the county, he says he's not waiting for instructions. I want improvement every day. The Japanese word is Kaizen, continuous improvement. That is how Judge Peter Sakai wants his first term running the county to go. So far, Team Sakai has held more than 150 stakeholder meetings and resolved 140 constituent cases, and the number ticks up each day. While outlining the long list of business and educational goals, he was particularly impressed by the new Spurs draft pick, but also its new practice facility. This $500 million mixed-use development highlights the potential of our public-private partnerships. The county and city secured significant public benefits from our investments. Those include a 20-plus acre park, job creation requirements, and a commitment to invest nearly a quarter of a billion dollars in property improvements. Andy noted that any talk about giving the same red carpet to a new minor league baseball facility in the county will have to undergo a rigorous vetting process. Unsurprisingly, the children's welfare leader also announced a new effort to bring mental health care for children and adults in line with the times we live in now. Like the reimagining of the San Antonio State Hospital as a cutting edge world class facility. My goal is to transform this underutilized facility on the south side into a regional asset to address the mental health crisis and the challenges in our jails. From the possibility of an Austin to San Antonio train to the bolstering of higher education in Bear County, you can see the entire state of the county address by scanning this QR code are going to ksat.com. To other news now, and it's a common complaint, chronic back pain. People try all kinds of things to ease their aching backs. Don't we though? Now, 1200 size Marilyn Moritz saying yoga with its deep breathing and its stretches may be just the thing to bring you relief. Hi, 
Natalia, welcome. Come on in. Talia Castro Pozo says yoga helped her aching back. After my pregnancy and, you know, dancing professionally for so many years, I had a lot of back pain and basically yoga really helped me, you know, feel better. Hips, back, knees or shoulders, yoga may help manage chronic pain. It improves flexibility and helps build muscle and core strength, which can help alleviate discomfort. Inhale, arch the back. Chaya Spencer is a certified yoga teacher. If you have chronic pain, she recommends finding the right type of class for you. Find a class that has the words beginner in the title or slow or gentle, restorative. If your issue is really intense, maybe you want to find a chair class. Inhale, lift your head your shoulders. She says the cobra pose can help relieve some stress from back pain. This pose is very good for creating stability in the lower back and flexibility in the lower back. So it firms all the muscles in the back body. You can also find yoga classes online. You'll need a good mat like the iYuga Pro non-slip. It tested well for cushioning and grip. Yoga may also have mental health benefits. The deep breathing involved, for example, can help relieve stress. After practicing yoga, I feel I feel integrated, I feel happy, I feel flexible, I feel ready to take on the day. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a look outside with live cam. Ooh, looks like a postcard there, so pretty. It sure does. We've got that blue sky and fair weather, patchy little cumulus clouds, cumulus, cumulus earlier today, and now they're starting to dissipate. And I want to start off talking about temperatures, comparing last year to this year, year to date. So let's get right to it. By this time last year, we had 31 days that were 90 degrees or warmer and actually five 100 degree days. So far this year, a whopping five 90 degree days. Our high temperature today, 88. So we did not add to that tally. Now, the hottest year to date, you know, as of May 31st last year was 101. We already hit 101, we hit it four times. Whereas this year, the warmest we've gotten so far is 94 degrees. I don't know about you, but I'm liking this year compared to last year, and we can really attribute it to that rainy weather pattern that we've had and the passing showers and thunderstorms and the areas of rain have really helped us out. You look at the readings right now, the warm spot Laredo at 95, Catula not far behind at 93, Del Rio 90, but this is near average for this time of year, even a degree or two below average. Del Rio's average high is 92, and typically we hit that high right around this hour or uh, even last hour around four o'clock. Hello to 87 now, 84 Canyon Lake. We've got a reading in Converse of 86, Pleasanton at 90, and Divine 89. Looking ahead through the rest of the week into the weekend, and even next week, we're going to be at to slightly below 90 degrees. We're talking 90 Friday and Saturday. Otherwise, we'll be in the upper 80s, and the average high is 90 degrees. The shower activity that we had along the coastal plain really coming to an end out there. Sea breeze moving in, kicking off some of those showers. I do think we'll see a little bit of this activity the next couple of days, but not a whole lot of it. The real action is in eastern New Mexico and moving into parts of far west Texas. That's where we've got the severe thunderstorm threat and ongoing severe storms in southeast New Mexico. Now, last week, in a previous weather pattern, some of that could have been steered our way. That's not the case right now. We've got this little bump in the upper level flow, a little weak ridge. It's a little blue H, little not the big one that we get in the summertime. And this is going to weaken, and then it's going to open the door for disturbances to come in from the Pacific, and that's going to kickstart daily isolated pop-up showers and probably non-severe thunderstorms starting on Saturday. So Saturday at 20%, then by Sunday, all the way through the middle of next week, we're at 30%. So not a whole lot in terms of actual coverage of that of those pop up afternoon showers tomorrow a coastal shower or two in the afternoon again that's about it otherwise low clouds early around sunrise briefly and then a decent amount of sunshine like today 69 in the morning 89 for the high temperature floresville nixon making it to 91 comfort 87 sabinol and hondo topping out at 89 tomorrow as i mentioned temperatures not changing much and then we really just have to watch out for a few Pop up beneficial showers is the best way to put it. And it's really one of those wait and see to where they pop up. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. Andrew Seeley joins us now. Andrew, this is not 
a recent phenomenon for the Cowboys. No. They have needed a kicker for at least a couple of years now. Yeah, and even looking back to last year specifically, the meltdown that Brett Maher had in the playoffs, four missed extra points, five total over two separate games. And guess what? Cowboys only have one kicker signed on the roster right now. When we come back, we'll talk with them about how they plan to address this need. Plus, D'Amico Ryans, no longer just a defensive coordinator. He's keeping track of both sides. Next. Just the senseless gun violence that's going on, we want to use our voice as an organization, as a team, you know, to make sure that you know, we put an end to it. The Houston Texans wore orange undershirts today in order to bring awareness to gun violence, especially in light of the one-year anniversary of the tragedy at Robb Elementary in Uvalde in Big Board Sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. But first, the Dallas Cowboys are in desperate need of a kicker. Brett Maher infamously kicked himself out of the starting job in the playoffs by missing five extra points in the NFC wildcard and divisional rounds. Maher is not returning to Dallas, and currently Tristan Viscaino is the only active kicker on the roster at organized team activities. The Cowboys did not draft a kicker this year, but there are some veterans on the market, like former Packer Mason Crosby and 49er Robbie Gold. How are the Cowboys planning on handling the kicking situation. It all depends on where the you know where the players are. We're, we're, we're looking at the other leagues. We're looking at guys that are out there on the street. Uh, you know, guys that potentially come up and trade. So it's a big mix of, of all of that stuff. And when's the time right when we find the right kicker to add to the competition? The Cowboys return to the practice field for OTAs tomorrow and Friday before starting mandatory minicamp on June 6th. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans have wrapped up their fifth day of OTAs this afternoon. They'll return to practice field on June 2nd. Head coach D'Amico Ryans is still adjusting to his new role. He used to only manage the defensive side of the ball, but how different is it now that he's managing both the offense and defense at practice? It's a little different, but uh, it's, it's funny having a conversation before practice with some of the quarterbacks and CJ's like, is it only a good day if the defense does well? <laughs> and I, told, I said, no, man, it's a great day when, when the offense is doing well and we're putting up points. So we're all in this thing together. So it's, uh, it's, fun. It's, it's fun being able to work both sides, being able to coach up and help the quarterbacks, help the offense, and also help the defense just seeing it all come together. The NBA Finals begin tomorrow night in Denver. The top-seeded Nuggets go head-to-head -head with the eighth-seeded Miami Heat. You can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. By the way, this is the first time an eighth seed has made the NBA Finals since 1999. And I think Spurs fans remember that year pretty well. Yeah, exactly. But I also want to mention it's Denver's first time in the Finals yes. ever. Yes, long time coming. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Andrew. We'll be right back. Low clouds in the morning tomorrow. Otherwise, just like today, really, we'll see a decent amount of sunshine. 69 at 7 a.m. Then by noon, we're up to 83 degrees. As usual, noticeable humidity. Not oppressive, but noticeable. And then 89, the high temperature will hit that at 4 and 5 p.m. Tomorrow afternoon, Eagle Pass, 90 degrees. Carrizo Springs, 93. Leon Springs, 86, again, the high of 88. And highs aren't going to change very much. We'll be at 90 Friday and Saturday. That'll be the warmest. We just see a little boost in afternoon pop-up showers starting this weekend. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6.